Hello friends, I am Prashant, I am TA for this course and this course deals mainly with uh, the experimentation which we do for aircraft determining what will be the angle of uh, deflections of control surfaces, how to determine center of gravity, uh, neutral point, climb rate and uh, how to determine what will be the CD of aircraft, drag, CD naught, various different things to experimental process. Today what we will be studying will be the calibration of control surface. Now before going deep into this topic, first let, let us understand what calibration means or why we do calibration. So as you know calibration is uh, configuring your result or output for a sample within a prescribed limit. For instance if I want to uh, sample my angle or deflection in the scale of voltage from 0 to 5. Now I have to calibrate that control surface and why we need this sort of calibration because as you can see in a aircraft as per your uh, stick control you can maneuver your uh, control surface whether it be uh, aileron or elevator. So why do we require, require calibration for this control surfaces as long as we are considering mechanical systems you can directly control it we are giving required input. But once your data acquisition system comes into play or you go for electronic circuit, it will give you output in terms of voltage and current. Thus we have to calibrate your system according to what voltage your deflection has been given or you have to map what will be deflection corresponding to your particular voltage. So that's why we need calibration of control surface. So for this topic, what will be the experimental setup or what will be the instruments required will be first you need a inclinometer second will be your potentiometer third will be your data acquisition system and we are using an NI data acquisition system, so NI DAC. And for seeing the results, you need a computer or a, a output device. Here we are using laptop or PC, and I think you can see the result. <coughs> now, these are the instruments which will be requiring for and also. A, interf a software for interfacing software for interfacing now i will be explaining each part what are the uh, what does each part measure or what does each part contribute to our experiment now first we will be going with inclinometer as the name suggests it has something to do with inclination that side that inclination inclinometer will give you what will be the angle tilt elevation or depression of a particular surface with respect to gravity. So inclinometer will basically give you what will be the angle whether it is a positive this is sorry this is negative slope so your angle of depression or angle of elevation or a neutral means it does not have any slope. Now we in the experiment we have two different inclinometer. Now this being a digital inclinometer as you know digital instruments are quite accurate. So the accuracy of this digital inclinometer is quite high and whereas this is your analog inclinometer. As you can see while tilting this instrument the needle indicates what particular angle it has been tilted. This represents your inclination or positive or negative slope. Now as you know this is analog device so the accuracy is not as high as that of a digital inclinometer but earlier days this was used for 
determining your angle or slope. Now the second instrument which we require is potentiometer. Now potentiometer is very simple device and also as you can see the name suggests potentiometer to it has to do something with potential or voltage. You can imagine or as you can say is a three terminal device A, B, C, a three terminal device and it has a rotatory contact which varies or which act as a potential divider between these two terminals, these two terminals you can vary your resistance according to that contact switch and your potential will vary according to that sliding mechanism. A simple circuit of potentiometer can be represented by a 24 volt DC supply suppose we are having this is your resistance R1, your R2, this is your contact, this is your load resistance RL. You have to determine what will be the voltage across this load resistance which will be equal to if we uh, further simplify this circuit. say this is R2, so that I can differentiate this R2 with this R2 and your load resistance RL. So the voltage across this load resistance will be the voltage across this VL, which can be determined using formula. The equivalent resistance between these two will be R equivalent equals to R2. RL by R2 plus RL. Now this will be modified as R1 by R equivalent. So voltage across this resistance will be V equivalent equals to I into R equivalent, where I will be I equals to this volt 24 or let me write this equals to VDC, VDC divided by R equivalent plus R1. Hence, my VL will be VDC upon R equivalent plus R1 into R equivalent, which is equal to VDC divided by R2 RL by R2 plus RL plus R1 into R2. RL by R2 plus RL. Further simplifying this, we will get VDC upon R2 RL plus R1 R2 plus R1 RL into R2 RL by R2 plus RL divided by R2 plus RL. This and this will get cancelled and your voltage across that load resistance will be VDC into R2 RL divided by R2 RL plus R1 R2 plus R1 RL. So as you can see by this particular equation, the voltage across your load resistance can be varied by varying this value of R2. If value of load resistance is very high, then you can simply write this 
equivalent to R2 upon R1 plus R2 into V D C. So, just varying this resistance using contact switch, you can directly uh, vary the uh, potential across your load resistance. So, that principle the potentiometer is using to determine what will be your voltage against the deflection of control surface will be coming to del when we will be discussing your uh, experimental part. Now, these two we have already discussed and I told we require a data acquisition system. Data acquisition system we are using is a national instrumentation this N I and as uh, the N I we can simplify that data acquisition system as an N I module all the sensor data will be coming into N I module. This NI module is powered by a power supply now the output of this NI module output can be seen in your laptop or PC. And obviously, you cannot directly access your NI module, so you need the interfacing software. Here we are using LabVIEW. This is a basic block diagram for calibration of control surface. We have discussed about your full system what will be required for your calibration of control surface. Now, let us see what is a process for determining what cali uh, calibration of your control surface. Now, the procedure involves you have to first mount your inclinometer on the control surface on control surface for which you want to measure or calibrate. Once this inclinometer is mounted on that device you have to secondly determine reference point reference point now what do you mean by reference point suppose this is your wing this is a 2d section of a wing and you have a control surface somewhere around here this inclinometer will be mounted on this particular control surface for which you have to do calibration. Now, as you can see this is not suppose this is your ground this is not exactly parallel to ground. So, by default your inclinometer will be giving you some reading say suppose for this particular instance is giving you minus 10 degree. So, your default or reference point without any deflection this is when your control surface has not been deflected suppose this is your wing this is your control surface it has not been deflected then this represents your reference point. So, say for this particular degree your voltage corresponding to this is 3 volts. Now, this particular reading you can while we while we will be performing your experimental experiments you can see how this uh, readings are uh, calculated using lab view program. So, this is your reference point after setting reference point third process is you have to set this reference point as 0 degree. So, for 3 volts your z deflection will be 0 degree. 
Now, in order to calibrate your control surface, the first step involves to deflect your control surface on a positive side and a negative side. So, if this is your wing section, positive means you have to deflect this upwards and calculate this angle using your inclinometer angle. This is for positive deflection. Similarly, for negative deflection, you have to calculate angle. You have to note that angle using inclinometer, it will be mounted here and corresponding to that using VI program, you will be able to get voltages. Voltages for different angles deflected on both sides with some interval that is I have already set my reference point and after that you have to deflect that in positive side and negative side with some interval say one with one degree what will be the corresponding voltages you have to measure and make a note of that. After performing this particular steps you will get a chart which will be voltages and deflection voltage deflection so for instance for positive deflection suppose i get a voltage of 4 volts with deflection of 10 degree and 3.8 with deflection of 9 degree similarly for zero deflection i only told you suppose it was t 3 degree. Now, while deflecting on different side, your reading will be for minus 1 degree, suppose your voltage is 2.8 volts and similarly minus 10 degree, your voltage is say 2 volts. So, you get a chart with voltages and deflection of control surface. Now, <coughs> since we are assuming that this is a linear the variation, the deflection of control surface with voltage is a linear variation. So, we will plot your voltage versus deflection will give you positive negative will give you a line of sort y equals to m x plus c, where m is your slope, c is your intercept, y represents your voltage and x represents your deflection. So, from this calculation or this particular readings, you will be able to calculate what will be the value of m, what will be the value of c. As you can see for x equals 0, that is 0 deflection, y will be your c and voltage in this case will be 3 volts. So, this will be 3 volts. Similarly, now giving different values of deflection, you know already c, you know the value of y, you can determine m. This is one process to determine what is the relation between your voltage and deflection. There is another way to determine what will be the relation of voltage and deflection of control surface. Now, suppose you do not have instruments such as uh, digital inclinometer, uh, inclinometer, then in that case what can be uh, approximate way to determine what is the relation between voltage and your control surface deflection. Now, we do not know what is the deflection of control surface. This was the readings which you determined from using this inclinometer, distal inclinometer and log inclinometer. Suppose you do not have any of that and suppose the control surface is too small to mount that uh, inclinometer. 
then in that case there is a approximate way to determine what will be the angle of deflection. Suppose this was your wing and you deflected your control surface to some degree say theta, this is theta. Now you want to know what is the angle of this. Since we are assuming this is a uniform control surface, means the thickness does not vary. So, we measure what is the distance between, what is the width of this control surface, say w is the width of this control surface. That means, this is w. You can also calculate or you can also measure what was the distance of this particular deflection from your equilibrium point. This was my wing, this was my equilibrium point, what was the distance say h. So, you know h, you know this, because this will be always constant since this is of uniform width and also this width does not vary changing your angle. So, you can calculate what will be the angle between, uh, what will be the angle of deflection using sin theta equals to h by w, where you know w, you know height. So, theta will be sin inverse of h by w. So, you can approximate or uh, you can develop a approximate relation between voltage and deflection. Now, I am saying this approximate because the result may vary. Suppose, for this 10 degree you are getting 4 volts, you know, for this you might get somewhat like 13 or 12 degree you will get 4 volts. It can vary according to that, but this is a good approximation way, approximate way to calculate if you do not have such instrument or the surface is too small. This is a good way to approximate what is the relation between voltage and deflection. Now, earlier I discussed why did we need calibration, means once we did calibration we got voltage and deflection. So, where we want to apply that? So, let us see some application where this calibration will be needed. Now, throughout this course you will be, uh, you will be seeing various datas that will be suppose or calculation of angle of attack alpha beta slight slip angle as well as what will be the deflection of elevator, your aileron and your rudder. So, these all are the quantities which you want to measure, but I told before also that when a digital system or electronics in system is involved, you can only get output in terms of either voltage or current. So, that is why this voltage for determining what will be the deflection of this particular control surface or what will be the angle of attack or side slip angle, you need to have a relation between voltages, current and this physical parameters which you want to measure. So, that is why we need calibration of control surface, not only control surface, different calibration we need, even for angle of attack, even for uh, calculating slide slip angle, different we require a relationship between them. And since uh, once calibration is done, that is you have found a relation what is assuming that uh, the control surface uh, deflection and voltage were a li linear relation. Once this constant and the slope is determined, while taking data, you will be only uh, if no so interfacing or software or be, um, coding has been done, then you will only get what will be the voltage for some deflection for some deflection, that deflection you want to know, because as you know in aerodynamics uh, of an aircraft you require different parameters, what will be C L delta A, what will be C D delta A or C L delta E, means you require a relation of delta E. So, you will be, only, you will be getting only voltages, 
And since you know the relation what is m, what is c, you can determine what will be your deflection using this m and c value. So, for, uh, for this experiment, we have derived what is relation between voltage and deflection. We will be seeing that while we are performing experimental uh, experiments live, then you can see what were the assumptions we took, how to determine reference point, how to deflect surface and what voltages we are getting. Thank you.